What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films, and I am back with another idiotic video for you to watch. And today, I'll be telling you how I use handheld techniques to get gimbal-like shots out of my wide-angle lens setup. In the examples I'll be showing you, I'll be using my wedding films, and as of late, I've been using the 14 millimeter G Master on my Sony a7S III with active stabe turned on, which is like the better stabilization setting in the Sony a7S III. So 1.1 times crop on a full frame sensor. So you're looking at instead of 14 millimeter, you're probably looking at closer to like 15, 16 millimeters or so. Um, but at a minimum, you should have at least a 24 millimeter lens. That would be as tight as I would go in terms of uh, lens focal length. Um, and yes, these lenses are quite expensive. This lens is a whopping $1,600. The 24 millimeter G Master, which I'm filming on right now, is a whopping $1,200 to $1,300. But there are other options for you. The reason why I like these options is because they're f1.8, f1.4, but you can use things like a Tamron 17 to 28, which is very versatile. It's obviously zoom, but it's also an f2.8, so it's not as bright in low light situations. So that's something you might want to consider. Also, it won't have as much bokeh to make your video look like some Tony Northrup trash. But yes, uh, that's an option. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of other wide angle options that are cheaper, but a lot of them are indeed manual focus. If I were to recommend a solid, very solid wide angle lens that is under 500 bucks for you, it will be the Viltrox 24 millimeter f 1.8 lens for your full frame E mount. Um, it's actually slightly wider than the 24 millimeter G Master, just very slightly, but there is a little bit more vignetting, so that's something you want to think about. But I think after. But I think if you're looking for a nice wide angle option without breaking the bank, uh, I highly recommend the Viltrox 24 millimeter f1.8 lens. And again, I'll be reviewing this lens on a separate video soon. And let's get to how I get handheld shots with the wide angle lenses that look like gimbal shots. Uh, essentially, I just heel toe walk as if I have a gimbal. I hold the camera like this and I just move, but in terms of like heavy walking type shots, you definitely would need something like a 14 mil, possibly 17 mil to get like some type of stability out of like just straight up walking. But you would also have to use some warp stabilizer or probably some slow-mo to smooth out any of the shakiness. So that is the one strategy. Or the other strategy, if you're having, um, if you're trying to induce more movement out of your shot, you need some type of foreground Activity. You need some type of foreground element to make the footage seem like it is moving. And let's say you want to do a push and let's say if you have a lens here, your camera here, you want to do a push and shot and have a lot of movement. It's good to make sure this lens will be in the frame as you push the camera in and get the shot that you're trying. As you're pushing the camera in, trying to get that shot, it will create more movement. Just as here, a wide angle lens, and I'm not going to even like do much, but as you can see. There's, I'm barely moving at all, but it's because of the edges of the lens. There's a lot more movement based because it's a wide angle. So you get a lot of more dramatic movement just from the lens being wide. So with that being said, let's go into the editing room. I'm going to show you some of the shots that I got with the 14 mil and show you what I did to make it look more dramatic in terms of movement. And I'll also show you how nicely warp stabilizer works on some of these 14 millimeter walking shots, um, things of that nature. So let's get into it.
All right, so right off the bat, uh, yeah, sorry, I kind of lied. I showed you a different film right before this, but I just want to show you that so I can show you this dress. This was shot handheld uh, with the 14 millimeter G Master lens on Sony A7S III with Active Stabe. And uh, if you if I play it back real quick, boom. A lot of movement, nice little push in. And I'm going to show you quickly how I did this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this uh, clip, just move it over here, paste it here, and I am going to remove attributes. All right. And now this is pretty much just like the raw clip. Let me move over the adjustment layers to, you know, make sure the grade and all that stuff is there. So I'm gonna just take these guys, move it over top. So this is how the footage looks without any editing. And as you can see, it's not, it's okay. You know, as you can see, like, is actually usable in a sense without anything done to it, right? It looks okay in like a quick edit, but I just want to make sure it's a little more refined, looks a little bit better, looks a little bit less trashy, a little bit less YouTube douchey. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have to change. And right off the bat, you will see that the rotation or the axis is off because it's a very low angle. I want to say I was holding this camera with one arm, one hand, and I wasn't able to, you know, get the leveling perfect. But to, if you want to level something, it is 4K, so you're not going to wait. There's another benefit of filming in 4K. You're not going to waste too much resolution by punching in. So I'm going to just go ahead and do like 105. That should be enough for me to rotate without losing information especially since i use crop bars uh these like so just go ahead and rotate it so that it gets looks about level negative one degrees that is close enough for me i'm not going to nitpick any further and i look at this clip um i like the general movement but it's a little bit low like the composition is not perfect so i'm gonna go ahead and lower it a little bit to about here um to start, I'm gonna do a keyframe positioning here, and then I'm also going to, um, you know, st start off lower on the keyframe here, and then I'm gonna go here and probably make it come the camera to move up a little more, revealing some more of the the hanger and the window up top, um, and then here's that here. Here's that shot, but I want a little bit more movement out of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a keyframe, move the 105 to the beginning of the clip and probably do, I don't know, let's say 112, give a little more of a scale in and then we'll have a little more dramatic movement in our shot. And there you have it. That's pretty much generally speaking, how I edited um, this dress clip Nice dramatic movement. That's all I did. Um, you know, just little things like that helps with the image, helps with uh, making the movement a little more dramatic um, without using a gimbal. Wide angle, slight movement, and a little bit edit, quick editing. It didn't take long, right? It was like, what, probably like a 30 seconds to a minute of just editing this clip to make it look like it's moving a lot more. So that's that. And I'm going to show you how... A good camera with IBIS um, and wide angle can make footage a little bit more dramatic just from it being um, just because wide angle or what have you. So let me try to pull up a wide angle shot here that I did. I know I was just playing around a little bit um, in one of these. Let's pull this over. Let me just pull this grade over again just so it doesn't like 
they look all weird. Bump up the exposure a bit. There we go. So this is completely handheld, and as I play it through, it's already like pretty smooth, and I'm like walking. Um, so let's do this again, show this example. I'm gonna be honest with you, just from like the looks of these shots here, I probably don't have to do too much, but I hear as I'm pushing in to the gentleman, um, I can put some warp save there. It's probably just like 3%. And then it'll look smooth as eggs. Again, this is handheld, this is not gimbal. So I am going to just go ahead and put a little bit of warp stabilization on to like this clip at a three, maybe 3%. We'll go ahead and wait for that to finish. Got another 25 seconds of trash. And this is what I'm talking about, how a slow computer could really kill your vibes of editing because you gotta wait for things to happen, wait for things to, to, to process. But as you can see, it's almost done. My computer is not too shabby, which is why I recommend fast computers for editing. Here's with 3% warp. Of course, the computer is being very choppy with the playback. Let me go ahead and um, just render this off. Let me just render the effects. And that's very gimbal-like movement out of that. And same with... This pushing shot of these ladies. Yeah, it's pretty smooth. I'm not gonna, I don't have to warp stabilize that. So that's just a quick example of how smooth, like super wide angle and handheld could be, um, you know, to get these nice, cool, like gimbal, sh gimbal like shots out of your handheld camera. Um, you know, obviously if you were using a tighter lens, you're not going to get that same effect because, you know, any type of camera shake is, uh, a little more dramatic. So even here, bump up exposure here a little bit. There we go. And this shot, I mean, this looks like borderline FPV drone or something type of shot. Um... There's another shot, walking backwards. Yeah, so that's just, you know, quick example. I'm telling you, again, if you want the best, if you wanna have good gimbal-like handheld footage, you gotta go wide angle. 35 and up, you'll probably get a little more shake. Just, you know, if you know what you're doing, you get some organic shake. I definitely don't recommend like walking and following type of shots uh, with the 35 and up and then having to put like a lot of warp stabilizer in post because it's gonna look all jello-y. And I've seen a lot of videographers out there uh, really endorse handheld walking gimbal or, or handheld walking shots saying that it's like gimbal with warp stabilizers. And then when they show their video, I could see warp on the corners. It looks, it looks pretty obvious to me that it was, you know, used warp stabilizer and it just doesn't look good. Uh, but to each their own, I'm not here to judge. So, uh, yeah. With that being said, guys, I hope this video was helpful. I hope it helps take your uh, edits, your films to another level. Like I said, a lot of times when you look at edits, these minor, like, epic looking things, these cool effects you add that are very simple could add a lot of, like, that extra 
a little bit of seasoning to your video to make it look and feel um, maybe a little more high end, maybe a little bit more epic. And it just gives you that nice, cool, like, whoa, that's, that's a really nice shot type of type of vibe, even though, yeah, it's not as ideal as, you know, the typical 50 millimeter shots that I love, those nice close-ups that I love, but just because you added like one or two of these elements to your film, to your edit, it will make the overall feel and, and look and uh, vibe of your film um, seem a little more, a little better, a little more high-end, maybe a little more epic, um, and it could, you know, that could make the difference between, you know, like a good film and a great film. It's these subtle things, these very subtle things in the edit that makes a big difference. And I hope you pre I hope you appreciate the content. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more. And until next time, lighten up.